The short answer is no, I'm not giving up on the marathon, but I am going to be doing something completely different. I'm talking middle distance track races, 25 miles less than a marathon. I'll explain exactly why I'm switching things up and why I think it will be massively beneficial for my marathon performance in the future. And I'll also tell you when that next 26.2 race might be. But first up, big thanks to Yummo's for sponsoring today's video, more on them later. And before I get into the here and now, I want to talk about what the hell I'm even doing this all for in the first place. Those of you that have been watching my videos for a while will know all about my dream to one day run at the Olympics. But if you're new here, I quit my job at the end of 2022 to commit to this dream to take my running to the next level. Things have been going pretty well for me since then. I've been able to say yes to opportunities I wouldn't have had this time last year when I was working my full-time nine to five. I spent two months training at altitude, spending time in Flagstaff in January and then St. Moritz in Switzerland just a few weeks ago. And I've been able to make running my number one focus, putting in the hours Hours at the gym, working on my weaknesses, prioritizing recovery and getting the sleep I need to run at my best and just really focusing on all those little 1% that make you better each and every day, which alongside some consistent hard work and training has meant that I smashed my marathon PB in Copenhagen running 229 and finishing third just two weeks ago. Oh, and we also made some merch. It looks like this. And now that you're watching this video, it's been released. Check it out in the description if you want to check it out. Since then, I've been taking some time off and recovering. It's so important, both mentally and physically, after a big goal and a big race like the marathon to just take some time off. So I didn't run for a little over a week. And then for weeks two and three, I've just been easy running, gradually getting my feet back on the ground, but without too much pressure on the structure of it all or hitting any specific distances. And next week I'll start transitioning into a more normal training week, hopefully with some sessions starting to appear so that I can get back to work to get ready for my summer of track races, which will in turn help me run even faster than 2.29 next time, which I'll break down in just a sec. Now, 2.29 doesn't get me to the Olympics, and it's 1 minute and 17 seconds too slow to hit the qualifying time for the World Championships this year. But it's a massive step forward in my Olympic dream timeline, if you like. If December 2022 was me announcing this Olympic dream, and everything I'd done up to that point had got me to here, then every step forward I take, every goal I hit between that point and reach Reaching the Olympics is a box ticked. Some boxes are bigger than others, but there are plenty of small boxes that all add up to make pretty significant steps closer to reaching that big goal consistently doing those little 1%. And a lot of you have asked me what the plan is for the Olympics. Am I shooting for Paris next year? LA in 28? Both. And to be honest, I'm not saying Paris is totally off the cards, but I also need to be realistic about the chances of getting selected. That's even if I run the time, which for the marathon is set at 2.26.50. I think I'm capable of running that, but the selection process is exceptionally tough at the moment due to financial difficulties with our governing body, which means I'd probably have to run a massive, almost nine minutes quicker than that to be even considered. And I'll explain why. UK athletics have shared some advanced information ahead of Paris for the marathon, which says the current UKA marathon event philosophy is based on supporting athletes' performance and preparation for 2024 Olympic Games to optimize medal success and the number of top eight placings. They have also said that there will not be a marathon trial event for the 2024 Olympic Games and that they will be selecting GB athletes who either finish in the top eight at the World Championships this year and that demonstrate realistic potential to finish in the top eight at the Olympic Games. What that means is that even if I run the Olympic sub 226.50 standard, or if any GB athlete runs it for that matter, they have a very slim likelihood of being selected because they'll need to also be ranked in the top eight in the world. And the last time that we had an athlete of that caliber was Paula Radcliffe, the literal world record holder from 2003 to 2019. 
2019. And the last time a British athlete medaled in the marathon at the Olympics was this guy, Charlie Spedding in 1984, which coincidentally was the first year that there even was a women's Olympic marathon in which we are still yet to see our first ever British athlete on the podium for. It's never happened. So under the current selection policy, it's a pretty bleak likelihood that I'd get selected for the Olympic marathon next year. Based on last year's rankings, I'd probably have to run around 218 to show top eight potential, which again, only one British woman has ever done, Paula Radcliffe. So until that selection policy changes to be more similar to previous years, i.e. top three Brits at the Olympic trial with the standard, which hopefully it will do by LA in 2028, or I make the incredible improvements needed to run the second fastest time by a British woman ever, my Olympic dream continues to be just that. A dream. But that doesn't mean I'm giving up on it because I love the process of working towards that lifelong goal and I know that at the very least I can get myself close to realizing that dream by focusing on myself, what I can control and getting stuck into a load of other different and exciting races. Which sort of brings me to what's next and why I started this video talking about becoming a middle distance runner. Which don't worry, I'm not going all in on the 1500 but I will be racing some shorter track races this summer. Some 5,000s, a few 3,000s, and even some 1,500s. So why? Hold up! Before I spill the tea on why I'm racing these crazy, speedy middle distance races, I need a snack. These Yummo's bars are protein packed, they're vegan, they're low in sugar, and they're tasty as well. Now I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Most protein bars aren't that tasty. They're just not. They're packed with too much protein, they've not made enough effort with the flavors, and you just don't really want to eat them. You'd rather have dry chicken breast. But these gooey, soft, chocolatey, delicious, dessert-like, angel-delivered Yummo's bars are the exception. Easy to grab as an on-the-go snack after dinner when you haven't got any dessert in the fridge, and just to top up those serotonin levels because they just make you so happy. It's so good, I'm actually just sat here eating it instead of filming this video. Right now, you can get the starter pack on Yummo's website, which is 24 protein snacks for just £35. That's £1.39 a snack, which is an absolute steal. And because it's their first birthday, they have a 20% off sale across individual items on their website. The starter pack isn't included in that because the discount is already such a steal, but go and check out their products. Huge thanks to Yummo's for sponsoring today's video. Should we get back to the video? Yeah. So why the middle distance shift? Firstly, track races are great fun. I've always loved racing on the track and I do this sport because I love racing and I always want to have fun. So that's number one ticked off at the get go. Secondly, I think that improving your top end speed and shaving off seconds from those shorter races is hugely beneficial for your performance over the longer stuff i.e. the marathon. Now, I briefly mentioned Paula Radcliffe earlier. Well, two years before running her then world record time of 2.15 for the marathon, she ran a 4.05 1500 meters. And that's a time that would have ranked her in the top five in the UK last year, not far behind the likes of world bronze medalist, Laura Muir. Adding in speed training, and in this instance, also adding in some more speed focused middle distance racing, does a few things that are beneficial for the longer distances, like the 10K, like the half marathon, and the marathon. Firstly, it stimulates the development of more fast twitch muscle fibers, which are what you're gonna need to improve your top end running speed. Important stuff if you find yourself in a sprint finish over any distance. And it's also gonna improve your running economy, which is basically how efficient you are in your running style and it prepares you mentally to go to a place that's uncomfortable that hurts but that teaches you to hang in there and stretch yourself at the times when you really want to give in to the pain that is the lactic sniper so I'm mapping out a few potential races at the moment I'm not 100% sure when I will open up my track season because I've got to get back into the full swing of training sessions and full workouts first but I'll keep you updated and and there will of course be race videos covering my antics on the track 
and I can't wait to get stuck in, have some serious fun in the faster races, and also put myself outside of my comfort zone, which I think is a good thing to do every now and then because it challenges you, and the worst case scenario is that I fall short of my time or race performance goals, but undoubtedly learn something in the process. I'm not gonna go all in on speed and slack on the endurance. This summer, my coach and I are gonna strike a balance between speed-focused work for those track sessions and for those track races, but there'll be plenty of endurance specific stuff in there as well. Your long runs, your tempo sessions, and just more aerobic focused work because I'm also gonna be working towards a fast half marathon after the track season. And that's sort of what's next in terms of a big race goal. I'm gonna be racing the London Big Half in September where hopefully I can replicate a Copenhagen-like performance and take a nice chunk out of my half marathon PB before then getting stuck into the next marathon block, which I might as well say now that I'm hoping will be for the Valencia Marathon in December. There's always crazy fast times run at that course. It just looks amazing. And yeah, I can't wait to go there and do that. And that's not set in stone yet, but that's where my sights are set. I know I've said it before, and especially off the back of the response from the Copenhagen race videos, but I am blown away to be in this position where I receive so much support from you, the people that watch these videos, especially my amazing patrons, of whom there are now over 50, which blows my mind. Thank you. That was a big milestone, and to celebrate, I'm hosting a patron only live Q&A session in a couple of weeks time. And if you're interested in being a part of that growing team, check out my page over on Patreon. Love the grind. Love the grind.